It is really easy to be saved. Just believe what Jesus Christ did. When we believe on him, we receive his righteousness and can stand before holy God. Believe how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. Salvation is every person's top priority. Jesus Christ took our sins, and we receive his righteousness. The Bible is God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable. 2. The most important thing in life. The most important thing in life is where we spend eternity, and we only have this lifetime to decide where that will be. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 9 verse 27. You choose heaven or hell. 3. The problem. God is holy and righteous. Nothing imperfect can stand before him. We all do wrong things because we are imperfect. How can a man be just with God? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 16 verse 36. 4. God's Solution The Son of God's righteousness is imputed, credited, to anyone that believes what Jesus Christ did for him. The perfect Son of God became sin for us, so that we could receive his righteousness. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 His spirit, his righteousness, his life in us are the same. We receive that gift the moment we believe. Unbelief is the only thing that separates us from eternal life with God. But God loves us and wants us to believe so he gently invites us to put our faith in what Jesus has done. We need to put our trust in who Christ is and what he has done for us. In whom, Jesus, ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1 verse 13 5. This is the gospel of our salvation. 6. God does not force us to believe. God values free will. He presents the facts of what his son Jesus Christ has done on Calvary and lets us make up our own mind if we will believe. God is patient, kind, and loving, but no one will escape his judgment. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Romans 2 verse 4 7. Adam and Eve disobeyed God's one rule. God told Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Eve looked at the pretty fruit. It looked like it would taste good. The serpent tricked her into eating it. So Eve took fruit from the tree, and she ate it. She gave some to Adam, and he ate too. They wanted to be like gods and judge good and evil apart from God. 8. God said Adam and Eve had to leave the Garden of Eden. God didn't want them to eat from another tree, the tree of life, and live forever as imperfect. God put some cherubs and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life, Genesis 3 verse 24. But God made a promise that from the woman would come someone who would destroy Satan so things could be right again. This would be the Redeemer, Genesis 3 verse 15. He would restore what Adam had lost. This time, Adam and Eve believed what God said. Because they believed what God said they will live again one day. Satan has a plot, but God has a plan. 9. Sin is in our DNA. Sin entered the human race through Adam and spread to all men. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 5 verse 12. Jesus obeyed. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Romans 5 verse 19. 10. We added our own sins. Our problem was that we inherited Adam's sinfulness and also commit our own sins, but by faith in Christ, we are justified freely. 
being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3 verse 24 It is by his grace that Father God imputes his son's righteousness to us when we believe that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose three days later. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Romans 5 verse 17 11. The Son of God did not inherit Adam's sin. The angel said to Mary, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Luke 1 verse 35 12. The Son of God grew, ministered, then died. Jesus Christ died for our sins in our place. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 verse 8 13. Death was proof that Jesus was human. His resurrection was proof that he was God. God is one in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. It was the second person of the Godhead who took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, Philippians 2 verse 7. The broken Roman seal, the empty tomb, the failure of his enemies to produce his dead body and hundreds of other facts confirm that the Lord Jesus Christ has been declared to be the Son of God with power. By the resurrection from the dead, Romans 1 verse 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Christ's resurrection assures us that his payment for sin completely satisfied the Father. Once we believe the gospel our sins are judged at the cross, and we will not be judged for them again. Because he rose we will also be resurrected. 14. God is currently not imputing trespasses. Right now, God is extending grace to anyone that believes before the rapture, after that there will be strong delusion. Not imputing trespasses is not the same as imputing righteousness or forgiven. The sins of all people, for all time, past, present, and future, have already been paid for by Jesus Christ. Reconciled means to be appeased, satisfied, and made friends. Father God has been reconciled to the world, but each one of us needs to be reconciled to him by faith. Our sins are paid for, but in order to be forgiven, we have to believe what Jesus Christ did. 15. Our sins send us to hell. Hell is full of people who rejected God. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Mark 9 verses 44 and 46, 48. If a person has not trusted in Christ's work, then they will be judged at the great white throne judgment of the lost souls for their own deeds, works. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? But unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Romans 2 verses 6 and 8, 9. 16. Not our works, we trust in his work. Our works cannot save us, to be saved we simply believe what his Son has done and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Philippians 3 verse 9 17. We are not forgiven until we believe. Many people have the wrong idea that there is something they can or must do to be saved. There is nothing we can do to make ourselves acceptable to God. However, the wrong things we do, sins, are not the thing that are keeping us from being accepted by God today. No, the thing that keeps us from being accepted by God is unbelief. 18. When we believe all our sins are forgiven. 19. We cannot save ourselves. We are spiritually dead. But once we believe, we instantly become spiritually alive to God by His power. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2 verse 1 We were slaves to Satan wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2 verse 2 20 
sealed and secure until the rapture. Once we stop trusting in ourselves and place our trust in Jesus, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that we will spend eternity with God, which is the earnest down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the rapture unto the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1 verse 14 21 out of Adam and into Christ. When we believe, we are taken out of Adam and placed into Jesus Christ. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22 We cannot see or feel this happening, we must take it by faith in what God says in his word. We must trust in what Jesus did in his merit, not in ourselves. From the moment we believe we are complete in him, Colossians 2 verse 10. If we are in Christ, we are judged by his works. If we are in Adam, we are judged by our own works. 22. We are translated out of Adam into Christ. Spiritually, we are translated out of Adam and into his dear son, Jesus, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1 verse 13. 23. We are accepted in his beloved Son. We are not accepted by God in ourselves, but we are accepted by the Father in his beloved Son. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1 verse 6. 24. Christ paid for us with his blood. Jesus died in our place. He took the payment we deserved. His blood paid for our sins. We receive the gift of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6 verse 23. Christ paid for us with his blood, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1 verse 7. 25. A transaction occurs when we believe. When we trust in what Jesus Christ has done for us, a transaction occurs, our sins are placed on Jesus Christ, and we receive his righteousness. 26. We are new creatures in Christ. We are not who we were. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1 verse 27 27. One Spirit baptized us into one body. By one Spirit we are all baptized, identified, and placed into his heaven-bound group the body of Christ. 28. We will live in heaven forever. We are not coming back down to earth. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, mortal bodies, were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 We are waiting for our special immortal bodies. For in this body, we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven, if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, die, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life, eternal. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 2 and 3 29. But wait a minute, tell me again, what must I do to be saved? This is how to be saved. Jesus has done it all and there is nothing left for us to do. All we do is believe. To be saved we need to believe the gospel, good news, of our salvation how that, by crucifixion, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. God knows our minds and our hearts. He knows if we have trusted what his son has done. We do not have to speak out loud. We receive his imputed righteousness the instant we believe and with that we can never lose our salvation. Please, put your trust in Jesus now, for we do not know what tomorrow may bring. Will you believe? 30. What do I do now that I am saved? Get to know God and the truth in his word. 
31. Which Bible should I read? The true Bible exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. 32. Which book of the Bible should I read? Romans. Keep reading even if you do not understand what you read the first time you read it. His Spirit in you will help you to learn what He says. It takes time to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12 verse 2. After we are saved we still sin because the sin nature resides in our mortal bodies, Romans 7 verses 17 and 20, but when we spend time in the Word of God rightly divided we sin less. 33. What is God's will? Who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. 34. What is God's purpose? God has predestined the members of the body of Christ to live in heaven, to be conformed to the image of His Son, and to receive a glorified body like Him, Philippians 3 verse 21. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine it to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8 verse 29 What is the best use of my time on earth? Godliness, Christlikeness, is the result of studying his word rightly divided with his spirit in us giving us illumination. God promises that godliness will be profitable in this life and of the life which is to come in heaven. 35. What does rightly dividing mean? Dividing what our Apostle Paul wrote to us in the body of Christ, Romans to Philemon, from the rest of the Bible. The body of Christ began in Acts 9 with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus and ends with the rapture. When we understand the difference between God's dealings with the nation of Israel and the body of Christ, we begin to understand the Bible much better. 36. Why did Jesus need another apostle when he already had twelve? The twelve helped Jesus with his ministry on earth. Paul helped Jesus with his ministry from heaven, Acts 26 verses 14 to 18. Jesus made Saul his one apostle, to the one body of Christ. One is the number for this group. Saul began using his Greek name, Paul. He wrote, for I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, Romans 11 verse 13. Paul went all over the known world telling everyone the news that Jesus was saving a new group of people to live in heaven. Paul said that when Christ died on the cross he saved two groups of believers, Ephesians 1 verses 9 and 10. 37. By one cross. Jesus Christ saved two groups of people. Christ saved one group that will live forever on the earth, Peter's group, and another group that will live in heaven, Paul's group. Spoken and kept secret are two different things. 38. The rapture is next. Are you ready? The believers will suddenly be caught up, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17, to meet the Lord in the air. 39. For more details about God's plan for heaven and earth with color pictures read, God's secret a primer with pictures for how to rightly divide the word of truth. Just as God said the certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture for still more information, read any of Marianne's Bible commentaries on Paul's letters. All her books are available on Amazon.com. Visit www.MarianneManley.com.